हेलो आई एम जैगम जहीर अ पी एच डी स्टूडेंट एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी साउथ कोरिया ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ माई टीम विच इंक्लूड्स आरिफ महमूद मार्शेला एस्ट्रेड एंड सिंग इटली आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस अवर वर्क क्लॉज नेट एनॉमिली डिटेक्शन इज अ चैलेंजिंग प्रॉब्लम मोस्टली बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट इट इज एक्सट्रीमली सब्जेक्टिव समथिंग नॉर्मल फॉर वन पर्सन माइट नॉट बी नॉर्मल फॉर अनदर While this problem might be solved by developing a consensus among humans, there is another major issue which makes it hard for the machine learning frameworks to learn to detect anomalies. An event might be anomalous at a certain location whereas it might be completely normal at other locations. For example, a fire in a stove may be completely normal, however, completely anomalous in the case it is in a bedroom or in a bus. Another example can be a crowd cheering for their favorite football team versus a crowd protesting against something. Unlike other datasets in the domain of object detection or classification, it is not easy to obtain the anomaly examples. Especially it is not possible to think of all kinds of anomalies and obtain training examples for each class. For this reason, weakly supervised algorithms are generally popular for anomaly detection. as they can at least save the costly procedures of obtaining fine grained labels given the intuition that normal data is abundant and relatively easier to obtain several researchers have proposed one class classification networks in such frameworks the classification boundary is learned using only normal data during test time a new data falling outside this boundary is flagged as anomalous however A fundamental problem with such architectures is that if the boundary is too tight around the normal data a new normal data which may be slightly deviant from the learned representations will also be flagged as anomalous Another protocol for anomaly detection is to utilize both normal and anomalous examples for training however to mitigate the necessity of obtaining fine grained annotations weakly labeled training is preferred At this point one may wonder why do we need weakly labeled training so just to put things in perspective let's take an example image extracted from a video if we need to obtain frame level annotation we can simply label this particular frame as normal or anomalous in order to locate anomalies we may also need to obtain pixel level annotations it may look simple until here but we have to repeat this process for hundreds of thousands of frames which is indeed a very costly process In our weekly supervised setting, if a video has an anomaly in it, even for a few frames, the whole video is labeled as anomalous. Hence, a video is considered normal if all frames are normal, and it is considered anomalous if some of the frames are anomalous. Almost all sort of weekly supervised formulations usually extract information based on some sort of internal reasoning. In order to do so, at least one video per one iteration is necessary however given that most of the cctv footages are captured using stationary cameras this can result in a strong data correlation to mitigate this problem we propose a batch based training protocol first each video is divided into several batches of consecutive features a random batch selector is then used to retrieve these batches in a random order A backbone network is then created using two FC layers, each followed by ReLU and Dropout. In order to complement the batch-based training, a normalcy suppression mechanism is devised, which learns to suppress normal features of an input. Each network prediction is compared against the video-level labels to compute loss. Additionally, a clustering-based loss is also introduced. In the clustering loss module. Intermediate representations from the output of FC1 layer for a complete video are clustered into two groups using k-means. For the normal labeled videos, both cluster centers are pulled closer, whereas for the anomalous labeled videos, the centers are pushed away. To distill the segment level predictions by utilizing only video level labels, the training is carried out using losses at three different levels. At the segment level, A regression loss between the individual predictions of segments is computed using video level labels. Although noisy, this loss can somewhat help towards the implicit learning to detect anomalous portions. Temporal smoothness and sparsity losses are applied at patch level. The 
the intuition behind the temporal smoothness loss is that the anomalous events are usually temporally adjacent, whereas the sparsity loss reflects the fact that anomalous events are overall rare. The clustering distance loss is computed at video level, where centers of the two clusters formed using all segments of a normal labeled video are put closer. However, in the case of an anomalous labeled video, these centers are pushed farther. Results on the UCF crime dataset are shown in this table. It is interesting to observe the behavior of the backbone network training in which no randomization is used in the order of input patches. Even in the presence of strong data correlation, the BBN somewhat implicitly learns to separate out anomalies by yielding 69.5% AUC on UCF crime dataset. When we break this order of input badges and introduce random badge selector, the learning gets better. Moreover, the normalcy suppression modules and the losses described earlier contribute significantly towards the improvement in performance by enabling the overall framework to learn explicitly about the anomaly discrimination. A visualization of the output by the normalcy suppression modules is shown. Once the training is done, NSMs learn to suppress the normal portions of an input patch. Figure C and D visualize a cumulative response of NSMs on each feature segment in a patch. Overall, the most discriminative anomalous portions are retained, while the normal portions are mostly suppressed. A few more visualizations of the output of our proposed normalcy suppression modules. In the third row, the overall suppression is quite accurate given that the badge is taken from a normal portion of an anomalous labeled video. As seen, a random badge selector on top of the backbone network improves the quality of anomaly scores. Normalcy suppression modules further enhance the discrimination by suppressing normal portions of the videos. The overall proposed clause net demonstrates superior results by enabling the network to produce better representations. As the training iterations proceed, the model evolves to produce better discriminative scores between the normal and anomalous portions of the input videos. Detailed experiments are conducted on UCF Crime and Shanghai Tech anomaly detection datasets. The results demonstrate that the proposed clause net yields a superior area under the curve performance compared to several existing state-of-the-art approaches. In summary, a weekly supervised training framework for anomaly detection is proposed in which we adopt batch-based training mechanism to minimize data correlation. The overall framework demonstrates state-of-the-art frame level area under the curve performance on UCF Crime and Shanghai Tech anomaly detection datasets. Please feel free to join our live sessions and ask any questions.